the 2026 F1 regs are fast approaching and everyone is talking about Mercedes and Ferrari's power units but quietly in the background something is brewing over at Aston Martin with their Honda partnership now which many insiders are calling the dark horse of the 2026 power unit era with a short wheelbase, tight packaging and a compact gearbox and weight saving down to the last gram. This car is being designed with one goal, maximum efficiency. And when you throw in an ultra efficient air system, monster engine braking and an extremely competitive power unit overall, you can understand why people in the paddock are quietly terrified of what they're getting up to. Oh, and did I mention the ace up their sleeve? Adrian Newey, the most successful F1 car designer in history, now involved directly shaping the future of their 2026 Challenger. This could get interesting. Let's break it down. And let's begin with Adrian Newey, who has joined the Aston Martin project in March of this year. And of course, he's a man who has spent nearly two decades mastering the art of packaging a car around a certain aerodynamic set of regs. And also within that, he has extensive knowledge of packaging Honda engines into his aero philosophy. And that is where everything he has learnt with Honda at Red Bull will come into play. He knows every trick, every limitation, and every available opportunity that partnership can bring to Aston. During his Red Bull years, Newey and the Honda engineers developed an extraordinary level of integration to the point where the engine wasn't designed first, then the car. It was the car that came first and the engine had to fit within it. And that is the exact philosophy which he will carry over into his work at Aston Martin. Honda have already confirmed in interviews since Newey's arrival that they've had to completely repackage the 26 power unit at his request. That is classic Newey. He's famous for believing the aerodynamics have to dictate the architecture of the engine and that it must bend to the needs of the airflow and not the other way around. What this means is this, the AMR 26 is being sculpted from the outside in. Newey has already designed at this point I would presume the aerodynamic platform, all of the proportions, the rake, the side pod volume and all of the airflow directions from the front wing to the diffuser and Honda's job is to engineer an engine that fits perfectly within that. And that's the kind of level of detail that wins championships because when the world's best aerodynamicist has direct input into how the power unit needs to be packaged you end up with a car where every component serves purpose. Honda isn't just building an engine, they're building an engine in terms of its architecture and its finalized physical project in the specifications Adrian Newey requests. And that, more than anything, might be the single biggest competitive advantage heading into 26 on the chassis side. Sticking with the chassis, let's now very briefly touch on the short wheelbase. Now, this is another key element that is universally going to be taking place. And that is the wheelbase of the 26 designs for the Formula 1 cars are going to be shorter than what we have currently and lighter. So Aston Martin is pushing that concept to the extreme. A short wheelbase will improve rotation, responsiveness and agility, which is something that will pay dividends in the slow speed corners. Add this with a very compact power unit with state-of-the-art technologies in terms of its earth recovery and the synthetic fuels being used within the power unit and Aston Martin could have one hell of a chassis power unit combination for Fernando Alonso to get his hands into. And one final aspect for the chassis is that of weight saving. Aston Martin is chasing every gram, with the 26 regulations demanding a minimum of 768 kilograms. But insiders say that Aston's internal goal is to run under that rate 
and use a ballast to fine tune the balance with lightweight alloys and carbon titanium hybrid housings for the earth's modules every bracket and cooling line is being re-evaluated it's a team-wide obsession rate reduction and this is driven by Nui's culture of nothing unnecessary stays on the car now let's switch our attention from the chassis and the aero side of things and focus solely on the power unit which we know is undergoing major revisions for 2026. In 2026 Formula One enters a brand new era with its power unit overhaul. The MGUH will disappear with the electrical side tripling in power. This means the battery will become essential. If it fails the car is finished. Energy harvesting and deployment is also undergoing major changes, which in turn will affect race strategy and overtaking. The result, power units which are heavier, hotter and tougher to design than ever before. Every manufacturer has to start from almost scratch, albeit with differing levels of experience and knowledge. And thankfully for Aston Martin, they start from a point where they had the strongest engine at the end of this current cycle, believed to be having 5 to 10 horsepower more. And not only that, the knowledge and experience of building a engine which in 2015 was the worst on the grid by a considerable margin and upgrading it to what became multiple championships with Red Bull. Now for 26, we know it's a split 50-50 between the combustion and the electronics. And of course, that means you need a supreme recovery system on your car, which Aston are rumoured to have. Now, of course, this is the level through which you can harvest energy around a circuit in one lap. And then, of course, this has a knock-on effect for each lap after that. So the more you're able to recover a higher level than your competitors the more of an advantage you will have over a race distance and that's why it's imperative you have such a strong energy recovery system second to that if you have that it then means you can save weight through having smaller rear brakes and they're not being utilized anywhere near the level you may have had to use them because all of the energy recovery is happening solely through the engine instead of through braking migration. So there are caveats to getting your recovery system to be top notch. And here's a brief breakdown of what that could look like across a race distance with examples of Mercedes being the best and Aston Martins being the one just behind it. Now the difference between both of these is going to be 0.9 megajoules of energy recovery per lap the Mercedes will recover the whole 8.5, which is allowed for 2026. And the Aston Martin will be recovering 7.5. So that difference equates to 1.1 millijoules of continuous full power deployment across the lap of Bahrain. And that equates to 3.14 seconds of that 350 kilowatt boost each lap. So averaged across the lap, that car, the Mercedes, would have the equivalent of an extra 15 brake horsepower if the whole energy budget was spread uniformly over the circuit. But of course we know that isn't the case, but let's keep things simple for this video. Now that would equate to between 0.2 and 0.3 seconds per lap. That Mercedes with the better energy recovery is going quicker than the Aston Martin's Honda. Now across a 57 lap race that equates to between 12 and a half and 18.8 seconds across the 57 laps. So that is a massive number to give up. And it isn't just the engine that is being worked upon tirelessly. There is also the additional factor of the fuel through which Aramco is making major strides in the fuel that they will be producing and distributing to Aston Martin to run in 2026 and beyond. Now this shouldn't come as any surprise. This is something that happens tirelessly with all the fuel suppliers to all of the engine manufacturers up and down the grid. Shell do it with Ferrari, Petronas have done it year upon year with Mercedes and it's the same case with Aston Martin and Aramco. 
Again, showcasing that Aston Martin and all of their partners are not leaving a single stone unturned. They are looking to make gains in every available avenue, which is what you need to do at the beginning of a new era in Formula One. How this all turns out and comes together with the AMR26 that Fernando will pilot from next season, only time will tell. And I don't think we will even see a full picture come the end of preseason testing in Bahrain. I think a lot of the teams will be sticking to doing long runs and playing around with engine settings and engine modes. And I think because it's going to be so technical, maybe some teams don't even get the chance to do full long runs come the final couple of days of preseason testing. And it will be only in Melbourne, I believe, is where the first race will be at again in 26, when we will finally see the true nature of the competitive landscape. 